Good morning, beloveds. My camera angle's a little weird. <laughs> it's March 15th. I think that's the Ides of March, which I think really is really interesting because Ides of March used to be a real thing. And then Pi Day took over, which was yesterday. Um, and now we don't talk about the Ides of March as much. So, eh. Fun fact. All right. But it is March 15th. And we have an interesting title today. Don't give it more than it's worth. The first quote is, And the wind ceased, and there was great calm, and it said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And that is Mark 439.40. Okay. Oh, yes. There's a very nice sun uh, beam right now. And the cat is nice and warm. Uh, perhaps you thought failure might come. Maybe you even feared it would come or in some way gave it entrance in to, gave it entrance to your mind. We live in mind and it can return to us only what we think into it. And that is Science of Mind, page 301. One of the most valuable lessons I ever learned came from a college professor. I was enrolled in his class in extemporaneous speaking. He was quite familiar with the stage fright that all students suffer from, and he offered this piece of adv ad advice. Don't dread something any more than it's worth. He went on to explain that if we were, were going to give, going to be, if we were going to be giving a five minute talk and felt concerned about it, we should take a five minute period sometime before the talk and worry as hard as we could, but only for five minutes. His theory was that if we knew a certain period had been set aside strictly for the purpose of dreading something, we wouldn't worry overly long. Strangely enough, I found that this has worked. It didn't lessen my stage fright. Only experience did that. But it did drastically shorten the time that I spent worrying. The science of mind philosophy has taught me that worry never accomplishes anything. And as I am more fully, as I more fully embody the truth that God is, that God is always available to me to call upon, I am better able to turn my concerns over to God and to worry less. I am grateful to the good professor who taught me not to do more dreading than something is worth. Today, I trust in the wisdom of God and release my current concerns into its tender mercy, in tender care. Rather than worrying, I let God direct me towards positive activities. And that is A.D. And again, I'm not sure who A.D. is. There's one person in here that we haven't gotten very often, and that's Adele Rogers St. John, but I don't think that's A.D. Oh, well. Okay. So, don't worry. Well, I was curious. I was like, don't worry more than it's worth. Um, somewhere in my long career in science of mind, and I say that, long career uh you know jesse's got more than 30 years in it and i'm i'm around 18 um is, uh and my brain just shorted out somewhere along my that in 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 the time that i've been in science mind somebody said something about catholics being um because they're so good at worrying actually make really good treaters because they already have that energy, that worrying energy that then you simply want to turn it around in, into what could go right. Okay. Cause they already, uh, worry. They're already, or maybe it wasn't even Catholics. Maybe it was just worriers. Uh, cause Catholics are really into the guilt. I was raised Catholic. So, um, but that, Anybody who worries a lot is 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 going to make a fantastic treater because all we have to do is turn the worry around into the positive. So whatever it is that you're worrying about, um, and I like her advice. It's like, okay, well, how long is it? Go ahead and set aside the time to worry. Um, you know, it, it's human nature, and we shouldn't suppress you know those tendencies but definitely put a time limit on it. And then 
turn it around. So whatever it is that you're worrying about, rather than imagining all the things that could go wrong, imagine all the things that could go right. Um, that it works out perfectly. It's one of the reasons why we end our treatments, this or something better. Um, it, somebody reminded me recently of Michael Beckwith, how he, he says at the end of a treatment, invite more good than I've ever experienced into my experience. And I was like, so that's what we can do. And that's what, that is what AD is talking about. It's like, well, if we're going to worry about something, let's get, um, we're, it's hard not to, it's hard not to. Uh, and some good planning does come out of worrying. It's like, okay, well, these are all the things that could go wrong. So let me make plans for those. So it has a purpose. It's just like the ego has a purpose. We just don't let it drive. You don't want to let the worry drive. So one of the things that you want to do then is now let's imagine all the things that could go right. What if everything went perfectly? Why not focus on that? Uh, if what we think about, we bring about, if we worry about all of the bad things that could happen, the, you know, the worst outcomes, we could invite that into our experience, which is what that science of mind quote is about. We can invite that into our experience um, simply because sometimes when we're worrying, we're not paying attention to what's going on around us. Okay. So we might miss little clues that would be very beneficial. However, when we're visualizing all of the things that could go right, it opens us up to the possibilities and maybe we see something that takes us off in a, in a completely different direction. So we succeed beyond our wildest dreams because we were open to the possibilities because we were imagining things going right. So I'm not telling you not to worry because planning is important. What I am, I, I, I agree with her set aside the time and that's it. And then turn that worry around and start imagining all the things that could go right. When you work with practitioners, sometimes when you go into a practitioner, you don't know what you want. You know what you don't want. And so what practitioners will do then is they'll say, okay, well, if you don't know what you want, but you know what you don't want, let's turn what you don't want around and see if that's the opposite. And it's not always, but it's, it's a stepping off point that you can use to get to what it is that you do want. Uh, and so this is the same thing. It's like, okay, I have had my time to worry. Now, let me imagine all the things that could go right. Let me imagine that this goes perfectly well. You know, set yourself up mentally, spiritually, emotionally for success. Imagine all the things that could go right. And that's one of those things. It's like when people come to you and say, well, imagine all the things that could go wrong. Your response can be, imagine all the things that can go right. Uh, and the benefit is when you imagine all the things that can go right, when things do take a turn for the, this is not what I expected, you're open to the possibilities rather than focused on the obstacles. I think it's good advice. It's good advice. Uh, absolutely. Imagine all the things that could go right. Just don't go so far into that you get your expectations because expectations are where we can get into a whole lot of trouble. So, you know, go ahead and wash those down the drain too. <laughs> Imagine all the things that could go right. Imagine that it works perfectly. And then expect the best. Expect the best. So... Just don't get too focused on specifics. Give spirit room to play. All right. So, uh, she, I think the mission today is down in her a little, well, I say her, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yep. Today I trust the wisdom of God and release my concerns into its tender care. Rather than worrying, I let God direct me towards positive action. And that sometimes is exactly what we need to do. When we are worrying about something, maybe that's the time to set it down. You had your worry moment and go do something else. Go do something. It's called distracting yourself and it's a good, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Go do something else. Sometimes that's the best way to, to solve a problem is, is to go work on something else and come back at it with a fresh, fresh eyes and fresh mind. 
So, all right. The mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to trust the wisdom of God and release our current, our, our concerns into its tender care. God's got this. Spirit's got this. You have the most amazing silent partner ever. And you can turn all of those concerns and worries over to it. Now, you are still responsible for taking the material actions, but you can turn the worries over to something else. All right? You don't have to do it. Set your time limit. Do your worrying. And then start looking at the positive and turn those worries over to your silent partner who's got this and you. All right. That's the mission today. So uh, the other mission is the same one I give you every day, which is to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Big, small, doesn't matter. Point is to do it, to to practice on yourself to create that habit, to create that default setting, to create that first response. Um, you are your own best test subject. You get immediate feedback when you practice love, kindness, and compassion on yourself. And more importantly, you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. It can look as simple as taking a deep breath. It is absolutely self-care. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Therefore, you get to take care of yourself. Absolutely take care of yourself. And when you are well nourished and well rested, you can go out and serve others better. So take care of yourself first. Absolutely. Uh, it's also about making room for joy. I talk, I talk about creating the habit in the first response, but I also want to remind you, it is about making room for joy. It is about, um, joy is a quality of God. All right. You get to have joy no matter what is going on in the world. No matter what's going on in your life, you deserve joy. It's one of the qualities of God. You get to embody that. I encourage you to do that. Um, and I remind you that your life is a special occasion. So don't save the good stuff. That is what I mean when I say eat dessert first. And sometimes I mean it. Sometimes I mean it. Sometimes I I will come home from a, a day of, you know, whatever it is that I have been doing, and I will eat a small square of chocolate. I will really enjoy that small square of chocolate, and then I will eat dinner. Okay? I'm not kidding about this. I'm not. So, your life is a special occasion. Treat it as such. Make room for joy. Take care of yourself. Make room for joy. All right. Okay, um, I also encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like. I encourage you to drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. Your brain works better when it is well hydrated. I encourage you to get early in your day bright light. I thoroughly enjoyed having the sun. The time change is just kicking my fanny, as it always does. Um, but I'm enjoying the, uh, the, the bright sunlight, as is the cat. Oof. Mm. There's very little in the world that I love more than a warm cat in the sun. <laughs> they always smell like sand. I don't know. But just that feeling, that warm feeling of their fur. Oh, and he's like, oh, yes, yes. Rolls over, says, rub my belly. Rub my belly. All right. And I'm getting distracted. So um, that early in your day bright light is about your circadian rhythms. You have a natural hormone cycle, a natural hormone rhythm, and it's called a circadian rhythm. And so when you get that early in your day, it it kind of helps to reset that natural cycle. You'll have more energy during the day. You'll sleep better at night. So try it. You might like it. Uh, and it is science. You can look it up. Okay. And circadian rhythms is spelled with a C. So if you decide to look it up. If I, if you ask me to spell it for you right now, hmm, <laughs> spelling is not one of my gifts. Spelling and geography. Yep. Okay. Uh... And then my, my Ernest Holmes quote, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind yourself you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. When we learn that heaven is a state, is, is a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. It ceases to be a place that we have to get to. 
it becomes a mindset that we can create for ourselves. And once we learn how to do that, it becomes a state of grace. Because once you learn to do it for yourself, nobody can take it away from you. I mean, that's the superpower. That is absolutely the superpower. Because once you learn how to do it, you can do it anywhere and everywhere. And then heaven ceases to be a place and becomes any place. And if we keep practicing, potentially, it could become every place. So practice on yourself. The way we create a world that works for everybody is by practicing that kind of stuff on ourselves. When we walk around in a heavenly state of mind, we interact with the world differently. And people respond to us differently. And that's what we're working on. All right, beloveds. Um, you can always take Emma's advice. Look for the good and praise it. Especially when you're having a difficult day. And if you're worried about stuff, start with the little stuff. It adds up to the big stuff. And, you know, an avalanche is made out of tiny things. So start with the, look for the little goods. Look for the little goods. Such as a warm cat in the sunlight. That is definitely one of my little goods. All right. I need to stop being distracted by said cat. All right. Here's where I, oh, Here's where I scare the cat. <laughs> Here's where I remind you that we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark on the social medias that we are on. I am the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Please feel free to avail yourself, like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. That way um, you'll you'll be notified when we post new content. Um, to my goal tonight is to get the Sunday service up. I just, I've had technical glitches and so I'm a little behind on that. Whew, we'll get back on it though. So that's that's my goal today. Um, whatever else I do, <laughs> that is my goal. All right. Oh, email info at creativelife.org. That is a constant contact. He gets the one email out a week and the, the hot links are hot. If it says click here now, it will take you right to the information you want, like our playlist. And we have a new feature on our website, which is creativelife.org, uh, where if you go to the Sunday talks again, it will take you right to, uh, the YouTube channel. So you can avail yourself of all of that wonderful content that's up there. We are at our three-year anniversary of live streaming today. Today was the, our uh, three years ago in 2020 was when we started live streaming. So, you know, there's three years of content up there now. Okay. I've said okay a lot today. Apparently that's my word for the moment. Right. Moving on. Oh, I get to encourage you to have a great day, wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonder-filled day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a good day, a worry-free day, a looking at the positive day, a turning our worries over to our silent partner day, our trusting our silent partner day, our knowing that it's got our back day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are not just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light, a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. You are a godling in whom God is well pleased and well represented always. I talk about a state of grace. That is the state of grace. That is who you are. That is who you are. I have faith. So get to know yourself and get to know the source of your own being. All right. Go with it. Go with it. Um, that silent partner will hold you like nothing else will. Always. Okay. Oh, I'm going to remind you, Reverend David should be on Facebook Live around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. Um, take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.